Hey everyone, if you've ever had problems equalizing your ears when scuba diving, then you're definitely going to want to stick around and watch this video, because in this video we're going to talk about how to equalize your ears properly. Hey, I'm Carlos from GreatDivers.com, and in this video we're going to discuss why we need to equalize as divers, we're going to talk about the different methods of equalization, we're going to have a discussion on ear anatomy, and we're going to talk about a few things you can avoid to make sure that your equalization is safe when you go diving. By the way, if you haven't already done so, you may be interested in downloading our free book, The Four Keys to Mastering Your Diving. There's an I right up here that you can use to download it, and it's full of a bunch of little known tips that'll help you become a better diver. Before we get started, let's talk about the anatomy of the ear. As divers, we need to have a basic understanding of the anatomy of the ear in order so we can understand how pressure affects it. The ear itself is made up of three parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Now as pressure increases on the outside, the eardrum itself, which you can see here, gets compressed and it pushes against the bones inside the middle ear. What we have to do is we have to equalize in order to equalize the pressure of the middle ear to the outside pressure so that the eardrum itself does not push up against those bones. And the way we do that is by equalizing and pushing air through the eustachian tube, which you can see here, into the middle ear. That equalizes the pressure and causes the eardrum to go back into its natural place. This is why we need to equalize when we descend when we go diving. So the first method of equalization that we're going to talk about today is the Valsalva maneuver. And the way that that works is you pinch your nose and you gently exhale through your nose while holding your nose pinched and your mouth closed. And what that does is it pushes the air from your sinuses into your ears and equalizes the pressure in your ears to the surrounding pressure. All right, and it, essentially it looks like this. Now when you do that, you're going to feel your ears inflate a little bit or fill up with air. And that's normal. And that's how you know you did it right. One of the things that you can do is you can make sure that the skin right here at the top of your nose blows up a little bit and you can look down and actually see that skin blowing up. And that's how you know that you've done this correctly. You can practice this in front of the mirror at home as well. Just make sure not to be afraid to exhale hard enough to get the air into your ears. Excuse me. Now let's say that you try the Valsalva maneuver and it doesn't work when you're diving. There are other things that you can do, and we call this the modified Valsalva. How this works is you're going to pinch your nose and exhale while looking up. You can do it while tilting your head to the right or to the left or wiggling your jaw. And either way, you do those things while you're pinching your nose and exhaling, and that actually helps the air go into your ears. The next thing we're going to discuss is the Toynbee. Now, the Toynbee is a little bit different. What you're going to do in the Toynbee is you're going to pinch your nose, but instead of exhaling, you're just going to swallow. And when you do that, the air also goes up through your sinuses and into your inner ear. Now this one isn't quite as easy and as effective as a Valsalva, but once you practice it, you actually get better at it and it works very well. Now there's a write-up that we did on equalization that has a lot more information. If you want, you can go ahead and check it out. There's a link below the video that has other methods of equalization and ways that you can go ahead and equalize as you descend. Now, let's say you tried all these methods and you still haven't been able to get equalization down. There's a few things that you can do to make it easier for you to equalize while you're diving. The first thing that you do is you want to equalize early and often. You can actually begin equalizing before you break the surface. And once you break the surface, you want to equalize continually all the way down to your dive site. By equalizing before you go down, you actually pad the ears a little bit and that helps on your descent. Now let's say that doesn't work. The next thing that you can do is you can try your descent feet first. This puts you in a position where the air goes naturally up into your ears and it makes it easier to equalize. If that doesn't work, you can try a feet first descent while going down on a line which will slow down your descent so that you can control it better. Now, if that, if that still doesn't work, you can try chewing gum before you go diving. This actually helps equalization as well, but you can't chew gum while you're diving, guys. That's impossible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now remember, you can do all these things while wiggling your jaw and modifying the Valsalva, which will help on your, on your descent and on equalization. Remember, guys, equalization is extremely important, and there's a couple things that I want to talk to you guys about that you need to avoid so that when you're diving, you don't put yourself in a position where you can hurt yourself. 
First, you never want to dive while congested. The congestion makes it impossible for you to equalize. It blocks the eustachian tubes and doesn't let air into your ears. Second, you never equalize on ascent. When you are ascending, the air will naturally escape the inner ear through your, your sinuses and out. If you try to equalize on ascent, you can cause yourself a lot of ear damage. <clears throat> Next, you never equalize if you feel pain in your ears. If you're descending and you feel your, your ears are hurting, you want to stop your descent immediately and ascend until the pain goes away, equalize, and then continue um, descending down to your dive. And lastly, never dive medicated. One of the things that people tend to do when they scuba dive and they have sinus trouble is they take medication to clear their sinuses. There's a couple of things that, that can cause problems with that. First, we don't know how these medications behave under pressure. And second, if you're on a long dive and the medication wears off while you're underwater, you can ascend and the air in your ears might not be able to escape, which can cause something called a reverse block, which is very dangerous. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There's a bunch of other videos on scuba diving that you can check out there that'll help you become a better diver. And Go ahead and leave us a comment below if you have any questions.